Are you ready, young one? I shall give you my best. But first, let's see if you can challenge my right. right, 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 right. If you wanna test me, I'm sure you'll find the things I'll teach you sure to beat ya. Nevertheless, you'll get a lesson from teacher now. Jump. 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 A foot. Hello, ballers! What's going on? You've been waiting for this one. It's the Mistweaver Monk, the most OP healer in the game. Yeah, I think so. And also, let me just say this. Let me preface you. One of the most fun healers I've played in a very long time. Absolutely amazing, amazing class. Uh, the design that's gone into this class is nothing short of uh, exceptional, quite frankly. And a big, uh, big shout out to Blizzard for making this one. They worked really hard on the Monk. And the Brewmaster has its problems, he has ups and downs. The Windwalker the same. Mistweaver is just extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. So let's jump into how you should be playing and specking your Mistweaver. The Mistweaver instantly differs from the other classes simply by having this ability called Soothing Mist and its interaction with your main heal, which is Surging Mist. Uh, there are obviously a lot of mist talk. We're going to be talking about a lot of mists. Uh, but essentially, your Soothing Mist is your channeled, low mana, nice little heal. Very similar to, like, heal from the healers and things like that. Uh, it's cast nice and slow. It's a channeled spell. I don't know if I can cast it on this dude. There you go. You can see it there. It's a channeled spell and it has ticks. Very similar to sort of Mind Flay and abilities like that. Uh, it has a chance to proc Chi, which is that other resource system over mana. It has a chance to proc it, okay? 25% chance every time it ticks. And it is a tick. Don't feel that it's continuously just tunneling healing. It's not. It's ticking every time you're channeling it. Uh, your Surging Mist is your heal. Now, Surging Mist... It's interesting because if you are just casting it normally, it has a relatively large cast time, 1.5 seconds, and it heals for 50,000. However, if you are channeling Soothing Mist, your nice low mana efficient heal, it's spammable. Look at this. You can spam that bad boy to death. Costs you a lot of mana doing so. Uh, it becomes instant cast while you're channeling, channeling your Soothing Mist. So therefore, if you're going to cast a Surging Mist, if someone's in danger, get into the habit, guys, of getting that channel spell underway and then start spamming it, okay? Be aware that in emergency situations, you can dump not only a lot of mana, <laughs> a lot of mana, but you can also do tremendous burst healing on demand with a combination of Soothing Mist and Surging Mist. We then got our AoE, which is called Renewing Mist, okay? And it sounds like Renew, and it's kind of like that, but it's also a heal that jumps around. You surround the target with healing mists, restoring, restoring 6,567 health every 3 seconds. For 17 seconds, it generates 1 Chi every time you cast it. It has an 8 second cooldown. Renewing Mist travels to the closest nearby injured party on raid member within 20 yards, up to 3 times okay so this thing jumps around okay it finds people who need healing and it jumps to them and that's how it works okay now notice it's not a tremendous amount of healing it's six thousand every three seconds you're not going to rescue anybody with just a renewing mist renewing mist is not an overwhelming source of hps over the long term of a fight you will get an astronomical amount of healing from just the tick itself however it's because it's of its interaction with this spell, Uplift, that it becomes really powerful. It heals all targets with your Renewing Mist active for 21,000. It costs 2 Chi. Renewing Mist can be on a lot of people at the same time through various ways of playing it. Not only just spamming it on cooldown every 8 seconds and having it jump around, especially in 25-man raids, uh, but its contribution with Uplift means that all those people with Renewing Mist are going to get massive amounts of healing. So the very, very nice synergy between Soothing Mist and Surging Mist and a lovely synergy between Renewing Mist and Uplift. Be aware... Soothing Mist, not a great source of healing. Renewing Mist, not a great source of healing. I'm talking about on-demand healing here. Over the long term of a fight, Renewing Mist is bound to be number one. Especially if it's an AoE healing fight. If you're really good at keeping it up, it will be your top source. But it's very slow. It's very methodical. It keeps ticking. It keeps going, but not for not great amounts. But then you mix them with Surging Mists and Uplifts, and you start putting out amazing HPS. Absolutely astronomical health, uh, amounts of healing. Let's talk about our talents. Now, there's some picking and choosing to be done, as always. Now, 
I need to touch briefly on our statue, okay? Every time we're in an encounter, be it a five-man or not, even on trash, get this down. This is your Jade Serpent statue. This thing is absolute bliss. So let me talk about what this thing does. There she is. You summon a statue. Now, you should be doing this all the damn time. As soon as you can move to a new area or your other statue is out of range, get your statue down. It's very important. It summons the statue at the target location. It will last 15 minutes, so you'll need to cast it once per boss fight, unless it's a particularly long one. And what it does, it gives you eminence passive. When the monk deals non-auto attack damage, remember that's non-auto attack, the summoned jade serpent statue will heal the lowest health nearby target within 20 yards, equal to 50% of the damage done. What does this mean? Is we now can DPS, and this makes this priest very upset because this is a super efficient, super powerful way of healing. It also does Serpent's Accord. When you cast Soothing Mist, the Jade Serpent statue will also cast Soothing Mist on an injured ally within 40 yards. Let's see if we can demonstrate for that for you. I'm casting Soothing Let's see if we can do it on this chap here. You can see it's choosing me. You see, the statue is automatically smart healing me. Interesting, isn't it? It's a very weird combination of things. Now, this is where we need to touch on the play style. There are two distinct styles of play, and they actually mesh really well together. One way is the purest healing style, I'll call it, which is straight up, you're standing back, you're hanging out like a total gangster, and you're just casting heals. We're casting heals on this guy, we're using Surging Mist, Surging Mist, and a couple of other heals that I'm going to talk about soon. And then there is the other style, which is more like a classic Dispree style, where we'll go up to the target, into the melee, like a total badass, and we'll start actually doing DPS. Okay, we'll be doing blackout kicks and all this kind of stuff. Now, I'm immune to the healing, but you can see my Jade Serpent statue is trying to heal me. And look at the amount of chi we generate by doing this as well. It's an interesting style of play that I'm going to talk about more towards the end of this video. So be aware of that. As such, we need to be sort of picky with our talents over which is going to be better. So the first thing is a movement speed increase. Now, this is again, is picking and choosing. Is it better to get across the room super fast with three rolls? Or is it better to gain a movement speed as soon as you roll so you can reposition yourself faster and get into positions to start casting some big heals again? Entirely up to you. These talents are undergoing change. They're still picking and choosing on these. They're not uh, exactly overwhelmingly fun or useful in any way compared to the straight up healing spells the monk comes with anyway. So pick and choose and have a play. They're going to become better. But Chi Burst, as you can see there, it does 30,000 healing uh, to all allies in its path. Compared to an Uplift, it's probably not as cool. Zen Spheres need to be above a target and Chi Wave is kind of similar as well. They're nothing amazing compared to the other spells we've got. But it is undergoing change and hopefully we'll see some sort of change to those that makes them better. The next one is an extra chi generator. So I roll with power strikes. Now in a five man, I just want to point out here that the gear I roll with in these five mans is four four six, and that was actually lower. I just picked up a ring on this character. I was actually way lower. I was wearing another four oh eight ring. I was considerably lower, and I managed to DPS heal the majority of it. Okay, so be aware you are a very powerful healer if you get used to playing this. Power strikes. Your jab generates an additional chi when used. This effect has a twenty second cooldown. So when we do our jab, we get extra chi, which means it turns into extra abilities to play. You see generating two chi just there. And when we can use that chi on any way we want. Of course, if you're not able to do any melee DPS, this isn't going to be that great for you. <laughs> so you should be aware of that. Uh, Ascension isn't really necessary. You should be spending your chi very effectively. This is kind of the, um, I kind of got what I call this the newbie talent. If you're struggling to manage your chi effectively, then Ascension might be good for you, but you shouldn't need it. It's going to come down to Power Strikes or Chi Brew. Chi Brew instantly restores all of your chi. This is on a one and a half minute cooldown. If you have some seriously clutch healing situations, Chi Brew is going to be the way to go. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Uh, if you just have nice, steady, incoming, even heavy damage that's continuing throughout the majority of the fight, then Power Strike should be for you. You should be finding a place near the melee, and you should be taking full advantage of the extra Chi generated by that and the healing from Eminence from your Jade Serpent statue. Level 60 uh, talents are kind of lackluster in terms of a raid setting. I will say that Leg Sweep is just hugely overpowerful for uh, five mans coming from a healer. It's a huge AoE stun. There's nothing better than stunning all the mobs. You don't have to heal that much when nothing's doing any damage. It's very difficult to pass this one up while you're running your five mans and doing general stuff. Everything else is kind of okay. Um... Charging Ox Wave is realistically the other choice. But these are more five-man utility spells. You're not going to find much use for either of them in a raid. 
Level 75 is always interesting. Now, self-healing isn't the best um, sort of way to go. I like this because I generally like to look after other people in the five mans. And I've been rolling on a lot of five mans today. In a raid setting, it's very difficult to pass up Diffuse Magic. Diffuse Magic is just incredible. Reduces all spell damage taken by 90%. I mean, how can you pass that up? And clears all magical effects on you, reversing them so you can actually reflect spells back. Super difficult to pass that bad boy up in a raid setting. And you might find a use for Damp and Harm. For healers, it's generally going to be Diffuse Magic. I like this because I tend not to look after myself in a 5-man, but in a raid setting, that's not really applicable. Uh, but Diffuse Magic. Struggle to find somewhere where you don't really want that. It's only going to be on fights that are pure physical damage, where you're taking some physical damage, where that's going to be helpful. You'll know the fights when you get there, in which case Damp and Harm will be better for you. Okay, level 90 talents. Um... In a raid, it's super difficult to not want Rushing Jade Wind. In a 5-man, you're not going to be doing a great deal of the old spinning crane kick. It's just unlikely to happen. You're not likely to be doing that unless you're having some fun doing some DPS. Rushing Jade Wind. You summon a Whirling Tornado that travels 30 yards in front of you, dealing 30,000 nature damage to all targets in its path and increasing damage taken by your spinning crane kick by 30% for 8 seconds. If you are a Mist Weaver, it increases the healing done by your spinning crane kick by 50% for 12 seconds. So you can see the wonderful synergy there, especially in 25 mans, uh, where everybody is gathered up. You might have 10 or 12 casters around you or whatever. And uh, Rushing Jade Wind is going to put out a tremendous amount of healing for your spinning crane kick. So in a raid setting, it's probably going to be Rushing Jade Wind. Uh, Zuen getting some changes for its healing properties uh, a couple of annoying things is zuen you need to actually attack the target when you spawn him uh, for him to actually do anything otherwise he stands around looking pretty but he does look pretty so that's one thing you've got to bear in mind is he looks fucking awesome uh, but he doesn't do a great deal unless you actually go in and start attacking things for the five bands i love cheat torpedo uh, cheat torpedo just shooting through the five bands especially if you've got a tank who's chain pulling and all that kind of good stuff uh, then cheat torpedo is just more beneficial to me for a five man for the low pal the allies in my path very easy to manage with five allies in your path to get some extra free healing it's just free healing always nice and the movement speed increase i do like cheat torpedo in a raid setting it's got to be rushing jade wind realistically uh it's just so powerful when you mix it in with that spinning crane kick and you've got plenty of people around you to take full advantage of that wonderful so pick and choose depending on what you're doing five mans i'd, I'd roll with cheat torpedo you're not going to be doing too many spinning crane kicks in a five man uh and if not go with rushing jade wind until zuen is nicely fixed and he's an absolute gangster which we hope he will be because he's pretty cool Let's talk about glyphs. Don't look here. I haven't put any of these glyphs in. Uh, these glyphs are particularly raid settings, I would say. One thing is uh, glyph enduring healing spheres. Now, this is from our mastery. Is while we're healing people, we could drop healing spheres near people. This is the new light well. Seriously, this is what kind of devalues mastery that we'll talk about soon. Uh, these healing spheres, I've seen some fights where I've just had so many healing spheres up and nobody goes anywhere near them. They don't give a shit, especially in a raid. Um, it's unlikely people are going to be moving around to get in your healing spheres, especially casters. If they're particularly idle, uh, then take it. And just so they're there. There's a lot of accidental healing that comes from them, which is um, kind of what they're about. So if I look at the... Shar of Doubt, uh, which is a heavy movement fight in a five man. I've just done the Shar of Doubt. If I look at the healing, uh, I can see quite healy that the Gift of the Serpent, which is this, uh, what where these healing spheres come from, did 179k on a fight where everybody is running around all the time and these things are getting picked up a lot. I'm not saying I've got amazing mastery by any means, um, but they will stick around longer if you have the Glyph of Enduring Sphere and there's a good chance people will walk into them. Uh, Glyph of Renewing Mist, this is generally mandatory. Uh, some people consider it for the raid setting. Is your Renewing Mist travels to the furthest injured target. Remember, we read Renewing Mist, it travels to the closest target. If you Glyph it, it will travel to the furthest target uh, and move back into itself. So it's pretty cool, actually, for a raid that's very widespread. And some of the fights do involve some quite widespread stuff. If you're doing a lot of spinning crane kicks and you've got Rushing Jade Wind and all that stuff, then this is kind of a mandatory Glyph in a raid setting uh, is that you'll move at full speed while doing it if you're trying to get everybody into that spinning crane kick and heal as many people as possible you don't want to be slowed in a raid ever being slowed in a raid fucking sucks don't do it uh <laughs> Your Surging Mist, okay, this is kind of like making it into a smart heal. Your Surging Mist no longer requires a target and instead heals the lowest health target within 40 yards. You have to be massively lazy to want to use this and sometimes it won't always do it. But still, it's there if you want the option is you'll just press Surging Mist and off it'll go. It'll find the smartest heal. Kind of taking, I don't like this glyph. It kind of takes some of the control out of, uh, it just 
lowers the skill cap, <laughs> as far as I could say. And not that there's much skill in picking a person to cast this spell on, but nevertheless. Uh, you don't want this. <laughs> I should mention it, but you don't want this. Your uplift no longer costs chi, but it instead costs 6% mana. Uh, you want to look after your mana in these early days. Don't pick that up. Uh, the other one I want to talk about is kind of mandatory now for people who are getting decent gear is the Glyph of Manatee. Uh, your Manatee is instant cast, so no longer are you channeling Manatee, uh, but instead you're consuming two stacks at once and it causes a 10 second cooldown. At this early stage, especially in the gear I'm rolling with, I cannot afford to use two charges of Manatee per tick. Um, it's just not worthwhile. And especially in the five mans I'm rolling in, there is always a time to cast Manatee and to channel it. You can even deactivate it and you're not going to lose any manatee by doing so. In a raid setting though, there is very, very little chance for good downtime to cast manatee. Therefore, in a raid setting, this is kind of becoming the most mandatory glyph out there. It will use two charges instead of one of your manatee. So in your early gear, guys, I don't recommend it. But once you start getting comfortable and getting good spirit, then yeah, go with your glyph of manatee. Let's talk about your gemming and stuff now. Ooh, that's the wrong button. There we go. <laughs> um... As you can see, I'm wearing like absolutely awful gear, which is a combination of season 12 bought stuff with no spirit on it whatsoever. Your basic go-to stat, essentially your gemming as well, is going to be getting as much spirit as humanly possible. You want to get your spirit up there. Uh, there is nobody, even in the current heroic tiers, who is prepared to switch out from spirit towards intellect yet. So you want as much spirit as possible. You're going to be gemming for as much spirit as you can. Get your spirit up there. That is what you're going for. After that, it is going to be haste, but only to a point. Um, you're going to be getting your haste up to about 1,450 rating. As you can see, I'm at 1,054, and that's with some reforging towards haste. If we can find some items here where I've done that. Crits of spirit. I've actually just gone for so much spirit on this character. <laughs> some things I've not even bothered reforging, so never mind. Uh, but you're going to work on your haste up to 1,400 rating. That is going to give you an extra tick on renewing mist and an extra tick of enveloping mist, which is your single target chi spender. Uh, it's what you spend your chi on for single target healing. You want, those, you want that 1,400 rating. The next time that you can possibly benefit well from haste is going to be about 8,000 rating. It's just not achievable right now, okay? Not achievable and probably won't be for a very long time. Therefore, as soon as you reach 1,450 haste, every drop of haste after that is essentially useless. It's garbage. Get rid of it. We have a one second global cooldown as it is and most of our spells are instant cast, especially with a combination of soothing mists. If we're soothing misting, our spells are instant cast anyway. Therefore, haste becomes absolutely useless. Don't get any more. Get enough so you have an extra tick of renewing mist and an extra tick of enveloping mist. And after that, don't even worry about it, guys. Don't even worry about that. After that, it's going to be either crit or it's going to be mastery. Now... Mastery is the uh, spawning the healing spheres. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying there. Therefore, you're going to be channeling a ton into crit, okay? Now, the synergy that comes from crit is essentially from the DPS style of doing things, okay? So, while I just dismissed mastery, if you're a kind of purist style player and you're hanging back, uh, sure, crit is going to benefit you somewhat from crit heals, but you might find that actually mastery and more healing spheres is more beneficial to you, especially on a heavy movement fight where people are moving around all the time. Think about Garalon in the Heart of Fear, people running all over the place. You're going to get a lot more benefit from your healing spheres in those kind of fights. Overall, though, crit has a double dip synergy uh, in terms of not only does it increase your DPS, once you start getting more crits, you remember the healing that comes from eminence is based on the damage done, you're going to see a nice significant DPS increase from that as well as getting crit heals as well. So you get double the bonus from crit. Uh, you're going to find a lot of the monks are pushing into crit well over mastery, purely because raiders and players are generally very ignorant. Therefore, your healing spheres are just going to go to waste, guys. Bear that in mind. Crit, though, especially if you get a chance to do some DPS, is going to be much more beneficial to you. I seriously recommend you roll with crit. It is the way it's going, and rightfully so. Mastery is great. Healing spheres are not great. Not cool at all. So let's talk about some healing rotational type stuff. Uh, you're generally going to have these two styles of play, which is definitely get down your statue. You want your statue down all the time, guys. Seriously, I can't stress it enough. Your main style of healing is going to come from probably, firstly, you're going to be doing a lot of the DPS healing, which is going to be doing a lot of jabs and some blackout kicks to start doing some big, big damage, okay? You can mix all those spells in there to start kicking out some lovely, lovely damage. Be aware your Tiger Palm is still there. If you're going to be doing consistent damage, 
very consistent damage all the time and you can keep tiger power up then do so because you ignore 30 percent of your enemy's armor you'll do more damage you'll do more healing very very nice very very easy all good stuff if you're going to be dropping in and out, I recommend you just get a couple of blackout kicks in there while you can. You're going to be, generally, if you're raiding, you're going to keep renewing mists on cooldown, okay? So you're going to be doing a lot of renewing mists, spreading that around, especially in the 25 mans, and then using your chi on things like uplift. So you could do jab, jab, uplift. It's kind of like Dance Dance Revolution, as you've seen. Dance, jab, jab, uplift. Jab, jab, uplift. This is going to put out amazing raid AoE healing all the time for not a lot of mana. You'll also notice while you're doing this style of play, is that you'll generate a lot of mana T. Therefore, you'll see your mana will go down relatively uh, quickly, but you're also going to notice that you can regenerate a lot of mana very quickly as well. You can see it went to five mana T's already. So that's the sort of DPS style of play. Keep tag power up if you can. If not, throw in a couple of blackout kicks and straight up just start throwing out some renewing mists on cooldown. And of course, if you're healing the tank, straight up go and get some enveloping mists on him as well. Very easy to do that. Be aware that you cast enveloping mists if you're not channeling uh, soothing mists. So be very aware of that. Don't be the newbie who stops healing. Get a channeling any soothing mists on. Get your enveloping mists on. Get back to what you're doing. And you'll get some really enormous HPS coming out from that. The other style of healing is going to be stood back. And it's literally going to be picking a dude and keeping Soothing Mist generally on your tank while clicking the other people and throwing out uh, your Surging Mist heals, generating Chi from that, and just generating whether you want to keep renewing Mists out. And depending on your situation, all right? Healing is all about the situational dependence. Just be aware that everything becomes instant cast while you're channeling your Soothing Mist. Very important that you get into the habit of that and get into the habit of keybinding your DPS spells as well because it's a wonderful style of healing that I'm going to demonstrate for you now, okay? So I'm going to jump into a dungeon. I'm going to show you different types of healing, both styles, and I hope you have a good time. All right, ballers? You